The Life and Sad Ending of Ted Cassidy Theodore Crawford Cassidy, known to the world as Ted Cassidy, was a highly distinctive American actor whose career left an indelible mark on the realm of television and film. Ted Cassidy's staggering stature is what got him his signature role, but it's also what resulted in his tragic and untimely death at the age of only 46. Today, we want to bring you a compelling story of Ted Cassidy, a life marked by triumphs, challenges, and a sorrowful conclusion. Ted Cassidy was born on July 31st, 1932. His life was characterized by his ability to breathe life into unusual and often otherworldly characters in offbeat and science fiction productions. One of Ted Cassidy's most iconic roles was that of Lurch on the beloved television series The Addams Family, which aired during the mid-1960s. As Lurch, he portrayed the towering, enigmatic butler of the eccentric Adams family, endearing himself to viewers with his deep, resonant voice and unforgettable catchphrase, You rang? This role not only defined his career, but also etched his name into the annals of pop culture history. Cassidy's talent extended beyond his portrayal of Lurch. He lent his distinctive voice to narrate the Incredible Hulk TV series, becoming the unmistakable voice behind the show's introduction and narration. Furthermore, he provided the voice for the Hulk himself during the show's first two seasons, bringing a unique and captivating presence to the character. Ted Cassidy was born on July 31, 1932 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania into a family of Irish descent. His early years were marked by remarkable academic prowess and physical prowess, setting the stage for his multifaceted life. Ted Cassidy's educational journey was exceptional. He displayed his intellectual prowess by skipping ahead to the third grade at the tender age of six, showcasing his aptitude for learning from an early age. As he transitioned into his high school years, his talents extended beyond the classroom. At the age of 11, during his freshman year of high school, he not only excelled academically, but also made a name for himself on both the football and basketball teams, demonstrating his athleticism. Upon completing high school, Cassidy embarked on his collegiate journey, enrolling at West Virginia Wellesian College in Buckhannon. During his time there, he became a member of the Alpha Sigma Phi fraternity, fostering connections and friendships that would shape his future. However, Cassidy's journey in academia led him to a new destination, and he subsequently transferred to Stetson University in DeLand, Florida. At Stetson University, he continued to showcase his athletic talents by becoming a member of the college basketball team known as the Hatters. Simultaneously, he actively engaged in student government, highlighting his commitment to leadership and community involvement. After completing his collegiate journey at Stetson University, Ted Cassidy emerged with a Bachelor of Arts degree, marking a significant academic milestone. With his educational foundation firmly in place, Cassidy embarked on a new chapter of his life in the world of broadcasting. In the summer of 1958, Ted Cassidy ventured into the realm of broadcasting by joining the team at WCOA in Pensacola. He dedicated himself to this endeavor for over a year, contributing his talents and passion to the station. Subsequently, he transitioned to a new opportunity as a DJ at WFAA in Dallas. It was during this period that Cassidy's multifaceted talents came to the forefront. Beyond his career in broadcasting, he was an accomplished musician, showcasing his musical prowess. In a delightful twist, he found himself moonlighting as an organist, entertaining patrons at a Luby's cafeteria situated in Dallas Lockwood Shopping Center. 
Ted Cassidy's life took a significant turn when he became an inadvertent witness to history. He found himself in Dallas on that fateful day, November 22, 1963, when President John F. Kennedy was tragically assassinated. Cassidy was not only present during this pivotal moment in American history, but also played a role in documenting it. He had the unique privilege of being among the first to interview eyewitnesses W.E. Newman Jr. and Gail Newman, contributing to the initial accounts of this tragic event. Ted Cassidy's remarkable height, standing at an imposing 6 feet 9 inches, became a defining characteristic that set the stage for his extraordinary career in the world of entertainment. This towering stature granted him a unique advantage when auditioning for roles, particularly those that required unconventional and larger-than-life characters. However, it was his portrayal of the iconic character Lurch in the beloved television series The Addams Family that truly solidified Ted Cassidy's place in pop culture history. In this role, Cassidy skillfully embodied the butler of eerie and eccentric Addams Family. Lurch's imposing presence, with his massive frame and deep voice, made him an unforgettable addition to the show's ensemble cast. What makes Cassidy's performance even more impressive is that, despite his character being known for playing the harpist chord on the show, he was, in fact, an accomplished organist in real life. This musical talent allowed him to bring authenticity to his role as Lurch even though the character was most famous for his eerie organ music. Ted Cassidy's versatility didn't end with Lurch. He also took on the role of Thing, another peculiar character in the Adams Family. Interestingly, associate producer Jack Voglin would step in for scenes that required both characters, demonstrating Cassidy's adaptability and commitment to his craft. Initially, the character of Lurch was intended to be mute, communicating solely through actions and expressions. However, Cassidy's natural wit and charisma shone through during the auditions. In a moment of improvisation, he ad-libbed the now famous line, You rang? in response to a call for the butler's assistance. This off-the-cuff remark struck a chord with the show's creators and viewers alike becoming an instant hit. It not only endeared Cassidy to audiences, but also prompted the show's creators to expand Lurch's role, giving him more lines and featuring him prominently in several episodes. In a delightful crossover moment, Cassidy revisited the role of Lurch in the Batman television series in an episode titled The Penguin's Nest in 1966. This episode is particularly notable for the famous scene where Batman and Robin climb up the side of a building. Here, Ted Cassidy makes a surprise appearance as a tenant within the building, adding a quirky touch by playing the Adams Family theme on a harpist chord before leaning out of the window to interact with the caped crusaders. It was a brief yet unforgettable moment that delighted fans of both series. Cassidy's vocal talents extended to animated television as well. He lent his distinctive voice to reprise the role of Lurch in an episode of the new Scooby-Doo movies in 1972, where the Adams Family encountered the Mystery Inc. gang. His deep and resonant voice was a perfect fit for the character, once again charming audiences with his portrayal of Lurch. Furthermore, Ted Cassidy's connection with the Addams Family continued in the 1973 animated series adaptation of the show. He provided the voice for Lurch in this animated rendition, ensuring that the character's unique charm and signature, you rang, line remained intact in the world of animation. Beyond his association with the Addams Family universe, Ted Cassidy's talent graced other television productions. According to TV and celebrity experts Thomas Duke Miller, he secured a small but memorable role opposite George Peppard 
in an episode of the TV movie series, Banasek. Even in smaller parts, Cassidy's distinctive presence left a lasting impression on viewers. In the realm of science fiction, Cassidy was a frequent collaborator with Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry. He lent his vocal talents to several memorable characters in the original Star Trek series. Notably, he provided the voice for the more aggressive version of Balak in the episode The Corbomite Maneuver, adding depth and tension to this fan-favorite episode. Cassidy also portrayed the formidable Gorn in the iconic episode Arena, where Captain Kirk engages in a memorable battle with the reptilian adversary. Furthermore, he brought the android Ruck to life in the episode What Are Little Girls Made Of, showcasing his ability to embody diverse characters within the Star Trek universe. Cassidy's collaboration with Gene Roddenberry extended beyond Star Trek, in the early 1970s, he worked on two post-apocalyptic drama pilots created by Roddenberry, Genesis 2 and Planet Earth. These projects allow Cassidy to explore different facets of science fiction and dystopian storytelling. Outside of the science fiction genre, Cassidy's talents shone in various television series, in an episode of the Beverly Hillbillies titled The Dahlia Feud, 1967, he portrayed Mr. Ted, a robust and muscular gardener responsible for planting dahlias. His imposing yet endearing presence added humor to the episode. Cassidy's versatility also led him to guest roles in popular series of the time, in 1968, he appeared on Mannix in the episode To Kill a Writer as Philippe Montoya and graced Daniel Boone in the Scrimshaw Ivory Chart as a pirate named Gentle Sam. His memorable appearances extended to I Dream of Jeannie, where he played the master of Jeannie's devious sister in the episode Jeannie, Jeannie, Who's Got the Genie? and Jeannie's cousin in Please Don't Feed the Astronauts. One of his most notable non-lurch roles was in The Six Million Dollar Man. In the two-part episode of Return of Bigfoot in 1976, Cassidy provided both the body and vocal effects for Bigfoot, a role originally portrayed by professional wrestler Andre the Giant in previous installment. This showcased Cassidy's ability to take on physically demanding roles and contribute to the show's success. He later reprised his role in the 1977 episode Bigfoot 5, solidifying his place in the series. Cassidy's extensive career also included an appearance in the long-running western series Bonanza. In the episode Decision in Los Robles in 1970, he demonstrated his acting range by taking on a role outside the science fiction and fantasy genres. Ted Cassidy's influence in the realm of voice acting and character portrayal extended far beyond his live action roles. Concurrent with his appearances as Lurch on The Addams Family, Cassidy embarked on a remarkable journey in the world of animation and voiceovers, leaving an indelible mark in the Hanna-Barbera universe. His distinctive voice and talent for creating memorable characters led to recurring roles at Hanna-Barbera Studios. Cassidy's deep, resonant voice found a perfect match in the character of Frankenstein Jr. in the series Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles. This marked the beginning of his prolific career as a voice actor for animated series. He even revisited the iconic Lurch character on multiple occasions making his presence felt in Hanna-Barbera Productions, notably the Addams Family animated series that aired from 1973 to 1974. In the world of superhero animation, Cassidy lent his voice to a range of characters. He took on the role of Meteor Man in Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, 
bringing a distinct vocal presence to the character. His participation extended to Chuck Menville's innovative short film, Blaze Glory, where his deep voice was augmented with reverb echo, creating an exaggerated, super-heroic sound that added depth to the character. Cassidy's voice resonated with comic book enthusiasts when he voiced Ben Grimm, famously known as The Thing in the new Fantastic Four series. His commanding presence and vocal versatility allowed him to take on a multitude of roles, leaving a lasting impact in the realm of animated superheroes. One of Cassidy's notable contributions was as the voice behind the iconic Godzilla in the 1979 cartoon series, a collaboration between Hanna-Barbera and Toho. His vocal prowess allowed him to breathe life into this legendary cinematic creature, contributing to the success of the animated series. Additionally, Cassidy voiced Montaro in the Janna of the Jungle segments that accompanied Godzilla during its initial network run, showcasing his versatility in portraying various characters. Cassidy's deep, resonant voice served as the foundation for sinister characters like Black Manta and Brainiac in Super Friends. His vocal talents brought these villains to life, adding depth and menace to their portrayals. In the world of intergalactic adventures, Cassidy was the original voice of Moltar and Metallus in Space Ghost from 1966 to 1968 further solidifying his presence in the world of animated heroes and villains. His final role as King Thun of the Lion Men in the television animated feature film Flash Gordon, The Greatest Adventure of All, showcased his enduring talent. Originally recorded shortly before Cassidy's untimely death in 1979, this role became a part of the television series The New Adventures of Flash Gordon solidifying his legacy as a versatile voice actor. In live-action productions, Cassidy's vocal prowess was evident in The Incredible Hulk, where he provided narration for the title sequence and brought the Hulk's growls and roars to life. Additionally, in deleted scenes from the original Battlestar Galactica TV pilot movie, Saga of the Star World, Cassidy's voice could be heard as he temporarily voiced the Cylon Imperius leader before actor Patrick Mackney took on the role. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Cassidy made a notable impact in the world of cinema. He appeared in Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid in 1969, sharing the screen with renowned actors in this classic western film. His versatility as an actor was further showcased in McKenna's Gold in 1969, where he portrayed intriguing characters that added depth to the narrative. Continuing his cinematic journey, Cassidy's filmography includes The Limit in 1972, Banasek in 1972, Charcoal Black in 1972, The Slams in 1973, and Thunder County in 1974, among others. These diverse roles highlighted his ability to adapt to various genres, captivating audiences with his distinctive presence. In Poor Pretty Eddie, 1975, Cassidy's performance contributed to the overall impact of the film. He continued to explore different facets of acting in movies like Harry and Walter Go to New York in 1976, the last remake of Bo Guest in 1977, and Go and Coconuts in 1978. His willingness to embrace unconventional characters further solidified his status as a versatile actor in the industry. Cassidy's creative talents extended to the realm of screenwriting as well. Alongside Michael Werner, he co-wrote the screenplay for The Herod Experiment in 1973, a thought-provoking film in which he also made a brief appearance. 
This venture showcases versatility and willingness to contribute to the creative process behind the camera. Notably, Cassidy collaborated with Noel Marshall, the executive producer of The Herod Experiment, on the adventure comedy film Roar. Although released two years after his passing, this project highlighted his enduring influence on the industry. In addition to his achievements in acting and screenwriting, Ted Cassidy demonstrated his musical prowess. In 1965, he released a 7-inch vinyl record on Capitol Records, featuring two songs, The Lurch, written by Gary S. Paxton, and Wesley, written by Cliffy Stone and Scott Turner. His charismatic presence extended to the music scene, where he introduced and performed the dance associated with The Lurch. His memorable appearance on television shows like Shivari and Shindig showcased his musical talents to a wide audience. Ted Cassidy's journey in Hollywood was shaped by both his unique physical attributes and a hidden medical condition that would ultimately play a pivotal role in his life and career. Standing at a towering height and possessing an unusual gaunt appearance, Cassidy's distinctive look contributed significantly to his success in the entertainment industry. However, this same characteristic would later lead to his untimely demise. Cassidy grappled with a medical condition known as acromegaly, a disorder linked to the overproduction of human growth hormone. This condition resulted in several distinctive physical traits, including his exceptional height larger-than-usual hands and feet, and pronounced facial features. While acromegaly endowed him with a commanding presence that suited Hollywood's demand for tall and imposing characters, it also carried an array of health challenges. One of the most notable health issues associated with acromegaly is heart problems, which encompass conditions such as high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and cardiomyopathy, an enlargement of the heart. These health complications pose a significant threat to Cassidy's well-being, despite his successful career in film and television. Throughout his career, Ted Cassidy found himself typecast into specific roles that aligned with his towering, ghoulish appearance. These roles included the iconic butler Lurch, the primal character Tarzan, and even the menacing voice of Godzilla. While his stature and unique features opened doors in Hollywood, they also confined him to a niche of characters, limiting the breadth of roles he could explore. Cassidy's remarkable candor about his career in typecasting sheds light on the frustrations he experienced in the entertainment industry. In a candid interview with Starlog magazine in 1978, just before his death, Cassidy voiced his dissatisfaction with the recurring pattern in casting. He lamented how actors with his towering stature and distinctive appearance were consistently pigeonholed into roles that portrayed them as simple-minded, bumbling giants, the stereotypical big dumb galoot who never took the lead but instead served as a physical presence to assist others. This prevalent typecasting left Cassidy yearning for more substantial, multifaceted roles that would allow him to showcase his talents beyond his appearance. However, despite the limitations imposed on him by the industry, Ted Cassidy's life story is a testament to his indomitable spirit. As Christopher Cook, the author of a biography on Cassidy, emphasized during Lurchfest, an annual celebration in Philippi, West Virginia, where Cassidy grew up, the actor possessed an unwavering determination to overcome adversity. Despite facing bullying and societal prejudices due to his size, Cassidy exhibited remarkable resilience and determination. Rather than allowing his physical stature to define him, Cassidy leveraged his unique attributes to carve out a niche for himself in Hollywood. He transformed his large size into an asset, 
making it a valuable commodity in the entertainment world. His ability to rise above the challenges of typecasting and capitalize on his distinctive appearance is a testament to his unwavering resolve and his commitment to leaving an enduring legacy in the world of film and television. As Cassidy's career continued to unfold, he faced the formidable obstacle of a non-malignant tumor, likely linked to his acromegaly, that necessitated open-heart surgery. This surgical procedure was undertaken in the hopes of addressing the tumor and improving his overall well-being. However, the road to recovery proved to be a challenging one. Returning home to recuperate following the surgery, Cassidy's health deteriorated unexpectedly, as reported by the New York Times. Despite his health struggles, he continued to contribute his voice to the TV series The Incredible Hulk, in which Lou Ferrigno starred as the titular character. Cassidy's off-screen narration was retained throughout the series, a testament to his dedication and professionalism. He even provided the guttural utterances of the Hulk during the early episodes. However, following his untimely death, these vocalizations were replaced with real animal sounds. Acromegaly, the rare medical condition that Cassidy grappled with, affects a relatively small number of individuals, with between 50 and 70 people per million being affected, according to the National Organization of Rare Disorders. While acromegaly itself is typically not fatal, it can lead to serious complications that pose life-threatening risks, as noted by acromegaly support. Unfortunately, Cassidy's health complications escalated after his open-heart surgery, prompting his readmission to the hospital while he was recuperating in his Los Angeles home. It was there on January 16, 1979, that Ted Cassidy passed away, just 46 years old at the time. His remains were cremated, and his ashes found their final resting place in the backyard of his Los Angeles home. A memorial service was held in his honor at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Hollywood. Despite his notable career, Cassidy's death garnered relatively little attention at the time, a reflection of his private nature and the challenges he faced in his final days, as reported by Connecticut news outlet The Hour. What do you think about the life and tragic death of Ted Cassidy? Leave us your comments in the comment section below. We hope you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next video. Goodbye.